In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Merciful Father in heaven, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Stop playing. 
that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the first Sunday in Advent is written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 23. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. So then the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. But they will say, as surely as the Lord lives who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them, then they will live in their own land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13. And do this, that is, show love, understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to you. Please come. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory be to you, o Lord. 
As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus went and did, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. The end of one year is not that much different than the beginning of another. The weather in January is not significantly different than the weather in December. Today is the first day of a new church year. The church year, the Christian year, is that thing that we do as Christians where we mark our time, not by the sun or the moon or the calendar, but we mark our time by Jesus. The year begins here in Advent, and it goes to Christmas, and Epiphany, then Lent, Easter, Pentecost, until we come to the end. The beginning is not too different from the end. So the end of the church year focuses us on the end, on the the end of times, and so does Advent. Last Sunday, the last several Sundays, actually, Jesus has given us a glimpse of what it looks like at the very end. Last Sunday, we heard 
The kingdom of God, like bridesmaids, waiting for the bridegroom to come, they don't know when he will come. All of them fell asleep waiting. Half of them didn't make it to the banquet because they were not prepared. So likewise, in our epistle today, St. Paul warns us, tells us, time to wake up. In both the end and the beginning, we are warned. A warned to, to be awake, to be watchful for the Lord's coming, for his advent, lest we be left out in the darkness. That's right. We. In Jesus' parable from last Sunday, all ten virgins were waiting for Jesus. All ten of them fell asleep. The virgins are those who are waiting for him. But only five entered the feast. St. Paul's letter in our epistle today was written to Christians, the Christians in Rome. These warnings about keeping watch to the end, these are for the church, for the Christians. Today we heard, or we prayed in our, in our college for the day, the prayer of the day, asking God to protect us from the threatening dangers of our sin. And so the first order of business for the church, for Christians, is repentance. The season of Advent, then, is a season of repentance, much like, like Lent is. It, it's not just a, a pre-Christmas or, or, or a, a winter fest or shopping season. These weeks are for repentance. It's time to wake up, Christians. Wake up from the delusion that, that everyone gets to go to the banquet, ready or not. To wake up from the delusion that your sins are no real threat to you. Or that you can go on and make friends with the world. And still be part of the kingdom of God. The beginning of the new church here is not that different from the end of the last. Except for, except for this. Now the end is nearer. You see, the end is not just an idea. It's a time. It's an actual day. And it's coming. And every year that turns over, the calendar turns over, whether the church year or the, the calendar, is another year closer. Every day another step closer. The night is far gone, St. Paul says. Sure has. It's been a long time. The night is this world and its darkness. And the day is coming soon. The new day when Christ returns is at hand. Time to wake up. Time to repent. Of course, the word repent is a very big word. It encompasses a, a number of things, but one aspect is to do what St. Paul warns in our epistle. To cast off the deeds of darkness and to walk properly as in the day. If we are to shine the light of God's word into the darkness, we will see clearly, we will see clearly deeds for what they are. We will see dangers for how dangerous they are. My dear friends, these things are not good. They are dangerous to your life, dangerous to your salvation. St. Paul simply mentions a few of them. Orgies, drunkenness, sexual immorality, sensuality. And instead of us thinking that these, well, Paul's listing some of these bad, really bad things that not very many people do, but those who do them are really bad. Rather, he is listing terrible things. that many excuse. That many of us, in fact, could be very tempted to go along with what everyone else says and say, oh, it must be okay. And we must be understanding and intolerant. And especially if we find ourselves doing the same thing. 
We should think of these things as the kind of things that, that people do who hide them in the darkness or pretend and act like they are no big deal. Everyone, it seems to us, everyone seems to treat God's gift of, of these examples, sex and alcohol, as no big deal. Everyone, it seems, to not just enjoy and use these things within, within marriage or within moderation, but to abuse as we wish. Now, lest you think that you are off the hook because these temptations do not plague you, St. Paul even includes quarreling and jealousy in the same list. Time to repent. And cast off the works of darkness. Wake up. Now. For he has been patient with you one more year. The Lord is coming. That is, the king of the world is coming. But, but here we will notice one more difference between the end and the beginning today. The beginning of Advent, if the Advent means the Lord's coming, we see how our Lord Jesus comes. And today, we see him not as one coming on the clouds of heaven, coming to judge the living and the dead, as we saw him in previous weeks, and we will see him again next week. Today, we see our Lord Jesus coming on a donkey, coming Humbly. See, your king comes to gentle and riding on a donkey. That is, your king comes to save you. To enter into the holy city of Jerusalem, to go and hang on a cross, to walk right into the threatening danger of your sin, to face death and hell itself, so that he might be called the Lord, our righteousness. So this is repentance. It is to put off the deeds of darkness, but also to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. To put on his own righteousness like a cloak. And for this king, this king who comes not to, not to destroy you, but who comes to give his righteousness to you, for this king, wouldn't you gladly take off your own cloak and place it on the road before him? Or give it to him to ride on the donkey? For such a king as this, wouldn't you gladly lend your own donkey if you were to just but hear the Lord needs it? For such a king as this, you would give up the things that once pleased you. Give up the things that once controlled you. For this king, wouldn't you walk properly as in the day? This business of repentance, much like waking up from sleep, is not easy. It's not something we enjoy doing, but that's why Advent and the whole Christian year reminds us. Reminds us Sunday after Sunday that all of this is, is not about you. Your repentance is not about you. Not about your amendment of life. It is about Jesus. And that's why we will say that the, the church year, the whole year, is another year of our Lord. A year of our Lord's gracious coming to you. He comes to you now, gently and humbly. He comes to you riding not on a donkey. He comes to you clothed in his body and his blood. He comes to you in the remembrance of your baptism as you remember that you indeed are clothed in his own righteousness. He is called the Lord our righteousness. You are called his righteousness. One more year quickly turns into another. And not much changes from year to year except that the end is nearer. But because we live in Christ, our King, because we are clothed in Him, we belong to Him. 
it's not just that the end is nearer. It's that our salvation is nearer. Your king comes to you now to save you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understandings will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again.
us humbly, mounted upon his holy word and sacrament, here in his holy church, where he delivers unto us forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Merciful Father, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may put away selfishness and greed, seeking to love and serve others as you have loved and served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, keep this nation under your care, and bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves, and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, look with mercy upon all those who are sick or suffering in any way. Ensure that they receive the care they need, and strengthen their faith, that they might hold fast to the sure and certain promises they have in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bring us to the holy altar in repentance and faith, that we might sing Hosanna to the one who comes in your name to give us his body and blood, to eat and drink for the forgiveness of all our sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you.
Jesus Christ, who did not turn away from the stroke of justice we deserve, but absorbed its blow only to rise three days later. As you promised your apostles, so comfort us with the knowledge that you have ascended into heaven to prepare eternal bliss for us and rule all things in our favor, that we may carry out your Pentecost command to preach the gospel to all nations. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 